Well, the day has finally come. <laughs> After starting our electric journey with a commuter bike, we knew that there was a commuter market there from day one, right? I mean, that's why we designed the product and, and now we find ourselves back there. When you close your eyes and you think of what people have been buying and designing bikes like for years, it's really that diamond style frame that we see in the high step or even just wheels, right? Wheels make up so much of the attitude of a bike and the 20 by threes and 20 by fours are pretty new to the industry and popularity really just since e-bikes were here in the US. It is kind of funny though that like we are now full circle creating a bike that looks like this because at a first side profile view uh, there's a lot of similarities still between the LX and this, but when you look at the details, big differences. Yeah. Even the tire selection. I'm really happy with the tire selection because, you know, we went with the 27 and a halves, but they're 2.1 inches. So th there's even that change alone adds more comfort to the bike. And when we look at the spec sheet that this thing delivers on, my goodness, we've completely addressed any type of concern. We wanted to create a bike that is uh, similar in value and offering than the 3.0, the XP. It is the single most popular bike in America. It's at that 999 price point, it's hard to not just be overwhelmed with the amount of value you're getting. You're getting 500 watt motor, 10 amp hour battery, uh, you get a front suspension, hydraulic brakes, all these things. And so we know that has a huge appeal to a lot of people. How do you do that, but now on a you know more traditional looking style? So when you look at the spec list of this thing, you're gonna see a lot of the same things that you, you know, know and love on the traditional XP flagship 3.0. When we're looking at the component tree on this, a lot of things are similar such as you know it's being offered in a 500 watt motor and a 10 amp hour battery but you know both the 3.0 and this are seven speeds for example right so the customer can uh, change their uh, level of output and difficulty on themselves and correct their gearing for the riding terrain they're in so it's a seven speed um, but the pedals, for example, are different on this one compared to the 3.0. Yeah, they're the quick attach. So we started that with the Expedition and carried it forward on XP. And now you're going to find that on the Express. So it just allows it to come to the customer and say, hey, you just, you know, quick release, put your pedals in and then you're off to go. Yeah. And so they kind of have this study grippiness to them uh, that I really like. And I kind of like that the folding pedals are on the folding bike and then these studded, you know, rigid grippy pedals are on this bike as well so i think that plays well so now they both have front suspensions but the front suspension on this one i would say is a huge upgrade compared to the flagship this is a 60 or no 80 millimeter 80 millimeters. front suspension it has those beautiful black stanchions on them which i i absolutely love um, but 80 millimeters of front suspension. This front fork was developed here at Electric um, for this bike intentionally. Uh, we've worked with great brands like RST before, um, but with this one, you know, we have uh, some talent here and, and the resources now at this size that we can tackle certain componentry developments such as this one. So although it's not an off-road bike, we actually, developed this front sus suspension and tested to the same you know EMTB 4210-10 uh, standard that the RST Renegade fork that had to be tested to so I think that just goes a long way in further developing componentry in our own product line so I think that was a great addition there you know we have hydraulic brakes on this bike we have the uh, color display once again. This is, you know, the another time we're doing the color display on our bikes, like we were talking about. Started at the ultra premium electric one, and then we've launched it on so many products since then, and bringing it to the rest of the lineup. Similar to the hydraulic brake. So, 
you know, now there's value um, provided there for the customer. I mean, one thing we didn't even talk about with the suspension fork is the through axle, right? Yeah. And so a big thing with this, customers might be looking at this with the larger wheel size, thinking to themselves, man, am I gonna have to assemble this thing? That's gonna be a real pain in the butt, right? Yeah. But with the through axle on there, with the quick attach pedals, again, just like our X-Peak bike, comes almost fully assembled. All you have to do is put that front wheel on, put the through axle through, thread it on, tool-free assembly, and then snap those pedals in and you're good to go. Yeah, and kind of one of the only in the game and in the industry that's operating in that way, right? So you can really be done in like a minute. Like it's just snapping those pedals on and that through axle, it, it will take like a minute. We just focus on the simplicity of the total purchasing experience. And, and that involves just not only our website, but also you taking the bike out and doing your very first ride and then maintaining it, it all the way through. We are always thinking and product designing with that at the top of mind. Yeah, and I think to piggyback off of that, I think you know you touched on things that the competitors do that are different, which is that tooled assembly. But I think when you look at the design of this bike, you're like, oh, it looks very similar to the competitor bikes, where you know it comes in a high step, comes in a step through, things like that. But it really is totally different. Where you know, for instance, let's take the step through, where the design of that bike, of course, step through, easy on, easy off. But the riding position can't be understated. That when you're riding that, you're in an upright position. You can totally you know, have that neck mobility because the further you're leaned over, the less neck mobility to turn and look you have. So, you know, it's really designed for that customer that says, hey, I want to have something approachable. Um, I want the larger wheel, but I still want to be able to be comfortable, have that safety and mobility while riding. And I think that's a huge feature and a differentiator when you compare us to our competitors, the design of that yeah. and the intentions behind that. That was a great decision by you guys to make sure that was available on the step through because the step through customer may be really focused on um, just the accessibility of the bike the comfort of it as they're riding and i think that was a, a great addition and it kind of allows these two bikes and their two different frame styles to serve two different types of customers a little bit where one is you know kind of that traditional commuter rider but with this like handlebar swept back handlebar and the um, adjustable uh, stem it's it, it can almost scratch the itch a little bit of just like a cruiser right and like I think that's the cool thing about these two frame designs is they're in a way can serve two different types of customers um, but you know allows us to keep things simple so this bike is the first time the customer has had the option to choose their motor size between the two. And so we have the standard, which is the 500 watt, uh, 500 watt, 10.4 amp hour battery. And this is kind of been the bread and butter design that Electric has uh, become famous for. You know, that's what the flagship XP 3.0 is offered in, is using that 500 watt motor. But then the customer can choose, all right, do I want the 750 watt and upgrade this battery to a 14 amp hour battery? So you can increase your battery uh, by about 35-ish percent, 35, 40%, but then you can increase your power by about five, or excuse me, 50%. And so you can have, you know, and, and with that additional power, you're going to want a larger battery to, to tap into. But let's just talk about the performance differences between the two, because the 500 watt is peaking out at a little over a thousand watts, but the peak on the 750 watt is 1300 watts. This is the most you know powerful motor that we use. This is the same motor that we used on the Expedition X-Peak, and the one is that seven, uh, 50 watt, it uses a 24 amp controller compared to the 20 amp controller. Uh, so there's just a lot more power. And when you, you know, put these two out uh, against each other, I think this has been a really fun uh, addition for the customer to choose how much party they want to take on, how much speed. And uh, I personally love the 750 watt, of course, but yeah. Yeah, I think this is a good opportunity to then talk about another crucial part, 
of these, you know, higher power levels, higher speeds, and that's the torque sensor. Yep, right? there it and is. So this is our first product ever. We've traditionally used cadence sensors versus the torque sensor. And for people who might not, you know, be aware of the difference between a cadence sensor and a torque sensor, you know, basically what we're doing on this product is instead of when you start pedaling, you know, the motor just kicks on and it gives you a, a, a set amount of assistance, right? The torque sensor actually senses how hard you're pedaling and so then it it turns on the motor proportionally. So, you know, it makes sense, right? When you're on a traditional bike without any electric features, if you pedal harder, you go faster, right? And, and that is now the same thing with this electric drivetrain with the torque sensor. It's like when you pedal harder, the motor gives you more. When you don't pedal as hard, it gives you a little bit less, right? And that is a much more dynamic and responsive ride than you get with the cadence sensor. Sure, totally. And so we have the right controller, we have the right motor. You know, this is a true 750 watt motor. And it, it's crazy that we're in a spot in the market where we have to say something like that, where it is a true 750 watt motor because it's really using a 24 amp controller. Mathematically, if you're not using a controller like that, you, you're not actually rocking with a 750 watt. You gotta be you know, using a higher amperage controller in order to tap in to what that motor has to give you. And so I think the creation of the Express 750 has been something really cool. And we did it at a price point that probably wasn't thought possible or was certainly not expected, right? Because at you know this price point of $12.99, we are not only putting higher spec, but better quality components than, than our competition. And so, and what does that deliver? better performance. So I'm super, super stoked on what we've been able to deliver because whether you get the 999 version or the 1299, you're still getting the TC80, you know, e-bike rated front suspension. You're getting hydraulic brakes, you're getting a color display, and then you get the fun uh, optionality to choose. Are you going 500 watt or are you going 750 watt? So super, super sick. Electric, we decided to develop this torque sensor in-house. And that's why people are gonna notice this torque sensor performs different than anybody else's in the market. And it's because it was developed by Electric. It was developed by you, know, you guys and your team with part of the intention of proving me wrong, right? Because I didn't like the way it performed, uh, torque sensors historically performed. It still has you know, a, a great high-speed performance. But then it all had to meet the pricing ceiling that I put you guys you know, with, which was the, I wanted to launch this bike at the same price as the 3.0. I want it to be the 999. So, you know, every bike we've launched this year has had this new technology, right? The M24 Stealth, right, that we're calling it. Um, this is one of the quietest motors that we've put on any bike up to this date, right? So I think when we did the math, you know, we're literally sitting in the product lab with our decibel meter measuring all of these motor noises, right? And I think that this one was somewhere in the neighborhood of a few hundred percent quieter than our, our you know kind of standard motors that we had put on bikes prior to this so you know from a commuting aspect with the slick tires with the m24 stealth motor this thing's gonna be pretty quiet when you're out on the road so we use PWR but so with this type of product it needs to take on PWR but it's in in its own form so PWR plus what's the 20 30 second version summary of that so there's still five levels of pedal assist, which is what we have on all of our bikes, cadence or torque sensor alike. And so the way that it's PWR plus is that every single pedal assist level is now a multiplication of what the rider input. So you touched on that a little bit, Robbie, where, you know, for instance, in pedal assist five, you have the option to have five times the input power, or if you change your P11, you could have six times the input power. So you put in 100 watts, you get 600, and that's 700 watts, which, you know, so you're, you're getting an immense amount of power just on the onset of pedaling, which is something very unique for this product that sets it apart from our other cadence base. Yeah. What I'm really proud of, you know, this team for is, we've now done a torque sensor under $1,000. This was another thing that wasn't thought possible that products could launch 
with an MSRP under a thousand dollars with the torque sensor and here we are today doing that so I, I'm super proud uh, of this team and just excited to see continued innovation because every time I, I throw something at you guys you just respond with the solution and I'm, I'm super super stoked on it